So dear friends, we are here once again and it's a beautiful week that has gone by and we look forward for another week of blessings that comes. In fact, it's going to be a week of blessings. I said last time that the liturgical year ends perhaps this Sunday, which is called the 34th Sunday, and the church celebrates on this last Sunday of the year of the church calendar. It's not the last Sunday of the year as such, according to the chronological times or dates. But for the church, the last Sunday of the year, that's the 34th Sunday, which is this particular Sunday, is celebrated as the Feast of Christ the King. Christ the King. You know, it's a great name. That Christ is our King. I read somewhere a beautiful advertisement, I don't know for, for what it was. And the advertisement had a big, for of big font letters, live life king size, live life king size. That's the spirit, that's the theme of the day. That Christ, first of all, he is a king for all of us. And secondly, he wants each of us to live life king size. Perhaps, first of all, I can say, what does it mean to have Christ as our King? You know, Christ is our King in a different way. Because the moment we think of King, Princes, Queens, we have that glory, we have that pomp and splendor that is connected with every King. But our King is the King of hearts. He is the King of the poor of the king of the, those people that have no perhaps dreams of even living life as such. And our king is always partial, leaning towards the weak, towards the poor. <clears throat> you see that beautiful gospel today and it speaks about Jesus as the king who in the last judgment perhaps would be judging and he would be need, leaning towards the real weak. I will separate you from the sheep and the goats. The sheep are the meek. They are the helpless ones. They are the ones who are always led for slaughter, for to be eaten. But these are the characters that Jesus uses to say that I am a king of these people who have no other no one else to lean to, no one else to help to. So therefore, our good works or bad works, whatever it is, characterizes us and Jesus judges us the way perhaps we look at others. Feed the hungry, drink to the thirsty, give clothes to those who are naked, the homeless ones, the ones who are prison, and therefore the ones who lean towards these people are followers of the king or rather they are kingly in all their works and characteristics. The second part I said that Jesus wants us also to be king size, to live like kings, live like king, queens. We don't want to be slaves. We don't want to be servants. I want to live an independent life. I want to be a king size. And therefore, what does it mean? Perhaps for many, it might mean some decoration, some makeup, some clothes. But for Jesus, it means surrendering ourselves to the will of God so that God rules our life and it's God who shines through us. You know, if you see a smile of a child, a princess, I would say, she has nothing to fear and a beautiful smile that she gives. I have a photo in my one of my prayer books of a child, one tooth is gone, but the smile of the child is captivating. We have to live king size. You know, there's a beautiful story of, of Rabindranath Tagore, which I've repeated many times in my sermons. It's about a king, and a king was, who was very kind and benevolent to the people. In fact, he made efforts to go and meet the people and see their life as they lived it. And the people also loved him. The people also loved him. They flocked when he came down to meet the people. And so it seems one day he decided to visit his 
people in the streets and he was riding a big elephant and the king when he was coming there people were so joyous they clapped their hands he waved at them and uh, so many signs of affection and then there was a beggar who came running and went closer to the king the elephant there and the king looked straight at him smiled at him and it seems he put up his hand he put out his hand by like that and the man was very nervous what do i what is the king expecting me is he expecting me to give something and he had this small bag where he carried perhaps certain grains of rice some which he had collected from so many begging from so many people and so he thought and he guessed correctly that the king is asking him something and so put his hand in the bag and put one grain of rice in the king's hand the king took it back smilingly and he went ahead and the story goes on to say that this particular beggar he went home that evening of course he was very joyous that he had seen the king and he had given also a grain of his rice to the king and so when he was measuring or perhaps putting the together the rice it seems he found in that grains that were there one golden grain of rice what does he think what does he do and his his mind flows it says this morning the king asked me something and i gave him one grain of rice and in turn it has been so that the king has made that in my this bag of rice there should be one golden grain of rice you know one golden grain means much but then this man suddenly puts his hand on his forehead and said what a fool i was the king asked me something if i had given one handful of rice perhaps i would have found today in my bag also a handful of golden rice we lose such opportunities because we are stingy we are always grumbling we are always critical we are always perhaps negative we have to be positive we have to be generous we have to make others we have to smile and make others smile live life king size so my dear brothers and sisters i wish you a very happy feast of christ the king and make it a feast make it a royal and forget all your problems at least for one day because god can take care of us god in his kingly style perhaps will provide us especially for those that don't have much because god is always generous god gives and gives as i have said in the past and he forgets what he has given so let us perhaps surrender ourselves to god on this day of the king to say that we are his faithful subjects i go to the second point namely as you know we are closing the liturgical year with a feast of the of the christ the king that's the last sunday many of our churches have the feast grand celebrations some have even processions of the eucharist and the figure of the christ the king etc they have so with this the year closes and the season that begins is called the advent season from next sunday onwards the advent season a new year the advent season is the first season for the the christian calendar then comes the christmas season then comes the lenten season the ordinary season perhaps we for flow it flows that way so therefore the beginning of the year is with the advent season from next sunday onwards it's the beginning of the liturgical year for us and as you know the the advent season prepares us in some way for you know remote way for christmas but in a proximate way it asks us to prepare for our life that god will enter god will come into our life any time and so we have also what we call the liturgical ordo the calendar of things the calendar of events the calendar of days or festivities that come which we say the ordo perhaps you will see here the ordo which gives us the whole seasons the feasts the celebrations the saints and every day references are there 
So those of you who would like to buy the Urdu and keep it for yourself because you have the readings of the every day which you can perhaps if you cannot go for daily mass you can even check up and say that today I read these readings in order to fulfill perhaps my spiritual longing. You will also know which are the feasts that come. For example, 3rd of, Ma 3rd of December in the first week of Advent itself is the feast of our patron of our Archdiocese, St. Francis Xavier. And then so many other feasts also come. So I would request you to have a copy of the Ordo also in your families. I say a little about Think Tank. It was a beautiful meeting that we had on the 6th of November in St. John's Medical College where about 50 to 60 50 to 60 delegates came together and uh, the process of thinking has begun. Many of them were stalwarts of their own industry, their professions, their, the, the different areas from which they represented and we had a whole day of meeting in which Bishop Francis Serrao gave the, gave the keynote address followed by Mr. S. Jaffet, the Vice Chancellor, ex-Vice Chancellor and also founder of the University in Bangalore. So with these talks we went into group of discussion as regards what could be the important aspects, the challenges before us. And we have advised the, the members of the think tank to meet separately now in different groups and to help the Archdiocese, help the region in ways that they can be always expertise of theirs, the things that are to be attended to, the things that are to be responded to, and surely perhaps things that we can implement wisely in the whole region. I thank the think tank members that came for the meeting and we have given them certain assignments, especially in their own groups, at their own level in order to be of contributors of joy, contributors of hope for the Archdiocese and the region. I now speak to you about an important concern of not only the Archdiocese but the whole state, what we call the voter ID revision of the electoral rules. You know, in a few months' time, we will be having the elections. And the government, in its normal course of events, as it were, has, starting, has started what we call updating the electoral rules. And this is very important because we have to vote. We cannot last moment go and say that my voter card is perhaps is not there, it's missing, I have not done, etc. So the government gives us time now. And this voter revision process has already started on 12th of November this month. It goes up to it goes up to 4th of December, the real dates are there. So what is what are we to do? First of all, as Christians, we have to to exercise our elect electoral duty of electing people who are worthy, people who are neutral, people who are always secular. And in this way, perhaps, we also have to elect good leaders. But for that, as I said, we have to have the electoral ID card ready. Is your electoral ID card, first of all, do you have it? Have you checked whether Perhaps the name is still there because perhaps some things have changed, your address has changed, it has gone. Unfortunately, these days we are hearing reports in the press in many places where the ID cards, the IDs of the people have gone missing. Where in Manglo it was reported that 18,000 voter ID cards were missing from the list itself. How has it happened? Does the computers make mistakes or is it intended by certain people? For this, we have to check our ID cards. The ID cards, how it, perhaps, what is the number, what is the area, what is the address, what is the name, is it written properly, spelled properly, your gender, female or male, it has been done. It's little, I won't say difficult job, but there are many experts among us, especially the youth, and I'm happy that many women in the Archdiocese have prepared themselves on their, on their mobile to put this app and check. In fact, the women told me that 
the women's group has started first in their own families to check their own cards to check cards of their the neighbors their family members their relatives and some in the parish and it was quite a disappointment for many of them to see that many of the cards are not perhaps valid enough for this we have to do this we have to do it in a war footing we can't relax to relax to say that we would perhaps would lose the chance to vote and therefore i have requested all our priests to announce on this sunday to the people to check their get their voter cards ready and checked and especially i would request that perhaps we can help you because it's not just that in the church that you can bring the cards and look at it and see it has to be done in your houses we will depute certain persons certain volunteers from among your parishioners for example the parish council members the youth the women who can make a band of about 20 to 50 people in every parish go house to house get the cards and check it and for those of these volunteers who are ready to do this service i would say service for the sake of others we have kept a small meeting on sunday that's today at 4 o'clock in the evening here in the archbishop's house where i myself will be there and we will form strong band uh, perhaps what we call a team that will go around the archdiocese but with your cooperation with your help and with your support i request the parish priest to take a lead to form this task force i call it a task force like a on the war footing as such that they are passionate that they are mad after this voter id cards of theirs and of the others perhaps we will succeed i request you to pay your attention and try to help the people who want to help you in this matter and if there's anyone who would like to come for this meeting of the volunteers kindly perhaps you can ask your parish priest or even come directly here on sunday 4 o'clock in palana bhavan i don't go out to go to the question that's a beautiful question but a quite a difficult one the one who has given this question is testing me also and also testing my bible knowledge i am sorry i am not a very good biblicist but then i did a little of research in this and the question goes like this what did jesus mean when he said i have set before you an open door i have set before you an open door what did jesus mean when he said this this quotation is in reference to the church of philadelphia we mention in the book of revelation chapter 3 verse 8 so what does it mean that i have set before you an open door first of all the church of philadelphia you know the book of revelation speaks of seven churches and one of the churches philadelphia and fortunately or unfortunately philadelphia is a very poor church a struggling church but praiseworthy because jesus himself praises this church as one with faith with hope with expectation for the future and so for this church the jesus utters a word of blessing as it were to say that this i have set before you an open door so what's the meaning of the open door perhaps two interpretations can be given the first one the door refers to christ himself christ is the door you know in the chapter 10 verse 1 to 9 where we have the sayings or teachings on the good shepherd jesus says i am the door i am the door and i am the gate as it were through which the sheep enter so therefore he says i am the true shepherd so therefore this door first of all as i said refers to jesus himself and philadelphia in the context of philadelphia philadelphia is the pillar among the other churches in their own way to the temple of god and therefore it is given to them to go through the open door that's christ into the temple of god so as i said that the first meaning of this door would be christ himself that for the philadelphia people that christ himself is the door and he opens it for them the second meaning could be of this text i am the door or rather i have set before you the open door 
it could mean also proclamation the proclamation because we have references of saint paul in many places where the do for him means proclamation or announcement to the people and perhaps this could be also a inspiration or a positive comment about the church of philadelphia to say that they have the ability to preach the gospel acts 14:27 he has opened the door of faith to the gentiles regarding st paul and the other disciples god has opened the door to the gentiles the door of faith so therefore the door here means proclamation in 1 corinthians chapter 16 verse 19 a door was open to me and paul says a door was open to me so this door could be of the door of proclamation in 2 corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 when i came to troas that's a small town to preach christ's gospel and a door was open to me by the word st paul is so perhaps insistent to say that i have this door of proclamation was open to me colossians chapter 4 verse 13 sorry colossians in chapter 4 verse 3 god would open to us a door to the word to speak the mystery of christ god would open to us a door of the word so therefore as i said this door could mean two things one is christ himself secondly the proclamation of the word in either way it means good and philadelphia the church of philadelphia is specially commended for its good work and as i said though they may be poor they are strong in faith they are pillars of faith this is perhaps my explanation you could also find other explanations for this word and you can also ask some other experts about it i thank you for this chance that is given me i wish you a very happy week and as i said may live life king size with christ as the king of your life God bless you. My dear friends, please do share your feedback, your impressions and your experience or send a message to the email address as you find on the screen archdblr@gmail.com and you also have the phone number, the mobile number wherein you can send your message or a uh, whatsapp on this number archbishop is ready and waiting to answer your questions if you have any question any doubt any uncertainty or there's no clarity upon something you can ask those questions and with the discretion that the archbishop will surely answer these questions in the weekly feature shepherd's voice thank you and we look forward to the next episodes